Almost overnight, the Sonoran Desert turns yellow. The indigenous Tohono O'odham call the spring months of April and May Oam Marsat, or yellow moon, and it's when they head outside to harvest desert foods like choya cactus buds. The rituals of gathering desert plants aren't as common now, but organizations like Toka are working on the reservation to preserve their culture, and their popular Desert Rain Cafe serves delicious native foods. Local experts like ethnobotanist Martha Burgess are also reintroducing these traditional foodways. On a bright spring morning in Tucson, people from all walks of life have come to learn from Martha the art of gathering and preparing choya buds. I should start by not only welcoming you, but also inviting in um, and acknowledging my teacher, Juanita Ahil, a traditional Tohono O'odham. Juanita taught me that when, when the desert is doing its times of plenty, it's so abundant that it's this incredible feeding frenzy. But if you're wise about how you're enjoying the plenty and putting it away, you can ride out the lean times. That's what the desert itself teaches us. The choy that we're gonna meet today is staghorn, the chiorim. And I'd like to have us separate our, the yellow from the red and that way we can do a taste test for ourselves. Almost every branch at least had one that remained for nature. The, on this plant, that bud, see how the size of that is bigger than some of the others? That would be one she'd go for. Getting at the desert's harvest isn't easy. You have to get past the choya's defenses, those prickly spines, as it happens, all around the choya there are small shrubs like bursage that have sticky resins in their leaves, and with a bundle of them you can brush the spines right off. Once the bud is clean, there are several tools you can use to snap it off. Some more traditional, some are more modern. She, she got a rib from a saguaro and split it right down the middle along the, the grain and made two half round fibers lashed them together with a rag or a string. She, in the old days, they would have made, made the rope out of agave fiber, the beaten fiber from the leaf of the agave. And then she called them papago chopsticks. <laughs> <laughs> and the bigger the, the chopsticks, the flatter the surface and the more grabbable they are. Bend it to the side and you can be real specific. You can get one desired bud. Hey, has everybody done the, uh, used the autumn uh, wawo? Uh, we all are well, skilled at the American wawo. The American wawo. With our buckets full of choya buds and some young prickly pear pads we found, we're off to cook up a springtime feast, but we've still got some work to do to make them edible. The spines on the cactus pads still have to be burned off, and the buds have to go through one more cleaning step to make absolutely sure there are no more spines left. There will be a hard, a very stiff spine. That's coming off of the stem tissue okay. and it's an older spine and it's not easily shed and you do not want that <laughs> in your food. It's also important to cook them as this helps to break down bitter tasting oxalic acid crystals and makes nutrients like calcium more bioavailable. These plants have evolved with the ability to keep herbivores away. We are not going to eat that oxalic acid very easily. The thing is you, the heat no matter what way you heat it, it's gonna change the oxalic acid into, and denature it. And it makes it so, it's, uh, it's, it's not only safe, but it's actually it makes it one of the best nutrients around. It's about the highest source of available calcium that you can get. that's got all sorts wow. of wonderful herbs and spices and chiles. This is the pipion rojo. Mm. That, uh, oh, yeah. 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 
I like it.